Hi, I'm back again with another episode of my mom's best foods, I guess. I need a better intro than that, but、um, I don't know if you can tell what I'm making just by looking here. It is a pork chop noodle dish, and honestly, it's probably like the easiest way to make a freaking delicious meal. As you can see, only four seasonings required, and if you are a regular cook of Chinese food, you will definitely have this in your pantry already. So when I was deciding on what to make for this episode,、um, this particular dish popped up in mind, and I couldn't figure out for the life of me why this particular dish stuck out so much. And you know, I started thinking about what are the commonalities between all of my favorite dishes that my mom makes. <laughs> More often than not, it's never something super super fancy, and usually it's not something we'd like serve guests during parties. Instead, I realize dishes like this are exactly what home food is. You know, food that may not be the prettiest.、Um, you may not eat it. Unless you are like in a rush or just have nothing else on hand, but because of that, I tend to associate these food with something exciting going on in our lives. You know,、um, I remember the last time I had this was when I just came back from Norway, and I had to quarantine. So that was about a month ago, and.、Um, You know, Chinese people when we eat, we tend to have like a bowl of rice and a bunch of side dishes, right? And because I couldn't eat with my parents, everything I ate during those ten days were pretty much like in one bowl. And I just freaking love this one so much. Can't wait for you to try it too. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking a pair of scissors to snip the edges of the pork chop. You do want to get the pork chop with the bone. It gives it more flavor when we pan fry it later, and you want to keep the bone on it as well. So just give it a nice little snip, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this mallet and just pound it until it's very thin. Close up of this meat. This looks pretty thin to me, so I would say this is like maybe like. Three to four millimeters. So you know how when you eat pork chops, a lot of the times it's very dry. This is how you prevent it. Beating it basically、um, tenderizes it. It would also make the frying process faster. So this guy is ready. It's about double the original size. If you want to see a side by side comparison, now we're gonna move on to this one. I'm making enough for two portions today. Oh, also, if you don't have a mallet at home, feel free to just take a hammer and like kind of wrap it up with a saran wrap and a rubber band, or just wash it really, really well.、Um, I've done something similar with the back of a knife before, also, or like oh,、um, like a rolling pin would be perfect for this too. So you don't have to buy one of these if you don't have one. But let me tell you, it is very satisfying. All right, we're ready for the next step. Can you see? Okay, cool. We are going to season these guys. You just want to lay them flat. We have about equal parts、um, salt and black pepper, but of course, depending on the size of your meat, you want to use the salt sparingly. Keep in mind these are thin, so we are going to be coating both sides. So you don't want to over season this. Now with the black pepper. All right, we're just going to flip these guys over. So as you can see, I'm not really. You know, going crazy here. Just so, just in, just season it enough so that it's、um, well flavored. Rub it in a little bit. Love my pork chop, very peppery. So I'm going to add in all of these guys. And really, I think this is what gives this dish a lot of flavor. And I apologize that the mess. Looking at a camera screen while doing this is very dizzying. Still very new at this, so please bear with me until I get the hang of it. So we're just gonna. Wrap this in. Okay, so I got a bowl. Now, what you're gonna do is you're going to lay your pork chop down flat. Don't do it like me. Make sure that they're not overlapping too much. All right, 
and we have some oyster sauce. And now this is one of those things that unfortunately you really shouldn't substitute. The reason is because if you use soy sauce, it is too liquidy. And I mean, it will give it a nice flavor, but the problem is since we will be kind of pan frying it, too much liquid will make it splash a lot and it's just that's not, not as good. Um, so definitely get some oyster sauce, um, also known as hoisin sauce. They do sell these, I think even in like you know, Ferrell's Metro, so you don't have to go to any specialized stores for it. Just give it a generous massage. Make sure that it's, you know, fully coated in every part of the meat. All right, now we're going to get our pan ready. So the key to frying pork chop in this recipe is having super hot pan and pretty hot oil as well. You can pretty much tell by um, drizzling in like a drop of water. If it sizzles away very quickly, it is ready. So I am using a wok today to fry my pork chops. The reason is because it is pretty much the most hassle-free way to um, pan fry anything with a lot of oil. Otherwise, it will splash everywhere and you might get injured and it's just a lot of cleaning up to do. But this shape is perfect for frying something like pork chop. You'll see later. Um, so I highly recommend this. But of course, if you don't have one, any non-stick pan would work. So I'm gonna put you guys up here. This is like a new setup I'm experimenting with. Um, so let me know if it works for you. So you see how the water sizzles away very, very quickly. So that's pretty much ready. Make sure you're using something with like high enough, um, uh, what's it called? Burning, burning temperature so it doesn't burn. Like don't use butter or anything. You will need a lot of oil. Okay, I forgot I had to take the camera off to film this step. So basically, you have to put on your cornstarch at the very last second so that it doesn't soak up too much of the sauce. Um, about two tablespoons will be good. And you just want to rub it all over the pork chop once again. And the point of this is so that it absorbs the moisture, traps in the flavor, and it helps it fry really nicely. Cornstarch is used very frequently in Chinese cuisine, um, usually either as a thickener or as a frying agent, kind of like this. It's hard to do this with one hand, so I'm gonna put the camera down for a second. All right, you can see? Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna rub it in. What you want to see, so this is not good. It's like mushy. What you want to see is kind of this kind of texture everywhere. So if you don't have enough cornstarch, feel free to add more. You can always shake off the excess. This is what's going to give this pork chop that like nice crispy coating without it being so heavy. So things fried in cornstarch tend to be not as airy, but you do get a very nice crispiness that you don't get from um, like other batters. Cornstarch, I find, doesn't take away from the flavor of whatever you're frying because when you coat anything in breadcrumb, it suddenly tastes kind of half ready, you know? All right, so the oil is just about smoking. I have it on like medium high, high-ish. You just don't want the meat to burn when you put it in. So in it goes. Oh, actually we're gonna do it one at a time. Ooh, my bad. There we go. So that might happen. That is not unconditional support. I don't know what is. <laughs> Happy's like, what is going on? Alright, let's put this guy over. So it seems like my oil is a little bit too hot. I just turn it down to low. I just have a plate ready with a paper towel to um, soak up any excess oil. Now that's the color that you want. So this guy is ready. Careful, the oil is extremely high. You do not want to splash that on yourself. Feel free to use a pair of tongs if you have them. So that's the color that you're kind of looking for. We're going to try this again with the other one. So the temperature is about medium right now. And in it goes, always away from yourself, never towards yourself when you fry anything. Look at that golden color. 
So this is the other side kind of the same color. It is ready. Right over here you go. Uh, that might be a little bit too much oil actually. So I'm going to dump some of that out. So about two tablespoons of oil left. Like I said, it's for two people, so it's not that bad. We're going to fry up some of the green onion bits. This is the base part of the, uh, the white part of the green onion. I don't even have my heat on because the oil is so hot. Chinese cuisine loves to get extra servants with the base of the onion, ginger, garlic. So this is a pretty common technique. Mmm, smells so good. If you're familiar with like scallion oil that they use in, um, uh, what's it called, Hainan chicken, it smells, it's kind of similar to this. Now we're going to add in our mushrooms. I'm just going to turn the heat back on to like a three. Alright, so the noodles are good when they are kind of like soft and lumpy, kind of like this. Now we are going to add in our chicken stock. I believe this is already salted, so we're going to just taste it later and salt accordingly. That's one whole can and then double the amount of water. Cool. And then we're going to turn it on high and let that come to a boil. Okay, I can't stop eating this. It is so flavorful. Hmm. Okay, I have to stop eating it. <laughs> okay. How is it? <laughs> okay. Honestly, if you like it crispy, you can just eat this as is. But we're going to make it a full meal. You know, it's not a full Chinese meal without at least noodles or rice. So we're gonna keep going. I'll try my best not to finish up before this boils. So I was really worried about over frying these because they're so thin. Uh, but my mom said that one good tip to kind of tell is if you can kind of see the bone um, detaching. I don't know if you can see. Kind of like that, then it's pretty much. We are ready for our seasoning now. We have four things. We have fish sauce, soy sauce, sugar, and some salt. Now, because our chicken stock is already salty, I'm going to put this off to the side and just use this for now. It is a pretty light broth, so you know you don't want to add any crazy seasonings here. No like lime or sriracha or just anything overpowering. All right, I'm gonna just turn the heat off. The characteristic of this noodle dish, it's a very light and clear broth. And there's a technique to making sure that it stays that clear when you add the noodles in and not all starchy and foamy, which I will show you later. But first, and the sugar adds a nice refreshiness. Um, goes well with the natural sweetness in the mushroom as well. So it is on the lighter side, so I will add a little bit of salt. I'm only going to add maybe like that much. Just as you go, um, not just as a way to tell if it's ready, but a, just a good way to like. Mmm, it is so good. Oh, and my mom just said that keep in mind that this is not the final broth. Once you add in the pork, it's going to release a lot of extra flavor, both from the oil and also the bone. So it's going to get even better. Than the first time I remember boiling these guys when I moved out to uni, I remember just kind of dumping it in like pasta and they clumped together. One tip is you have to wait till it comes to a rolling boil. And then there's a specific way you fan it out to prevent it from getting stuck to each other. I'm gonna share with you what the, the tips I didn't have when I first began cooking. And you want to fan it out. So you basically drop it down the middle and you let it go and then it will do its thing. So my mom said it usually takes six minutes. I know it's ready when you pick, pick it up and it's limpy. So this is still too hard. And we're going to do the pinch test afterwards. Just keep an eye on it because it might boil over. In that case, just add a little bit of cold water and you'll be okay. Too many things going on. All right. So it seems like it's about to boil over. I'm gonna add a little bit of cold water just to help it slow down a little bit. You won't have this problem if you don't have as much liquid as I did, 
but since I'm making enough for two people, you need enough to just make sure that it has enough liquid to disperse the starch. The characteristic of this broth is that it has to be clear. And a lot of times what happens is when you drop the noodles into the broth, it's going to turn muddy because of the starch. So one trick to prevent that from happening is to stop cooking the noodles right under. And we're going to into a colander. And you want to wash away the starch that's stuck to the outside of the noodle, like the free floating starch. Quick rinse under full tap water. So that is good. You don't want to do it too much or else, same with last time, you won't be able to get the flavors in. It is still pretty hot. It's back on to like a medium. And we're going to add in our noodles. Just going to separate it a little bit. Look at that, very clean broth. Okay, so I'm going to turn it on a high actually, I lied. And you just want it to come to a boil. And before it does, you're going to add in your pork, just to, you know, add in some extra flavor and also for all the delicious juice to go in the pork. So we're just going to blend some veggies. I'm going to add a little tiny bit of salt and a little bit of oil this would just keep the greens you know green and also add some flavor oh it's so good the meat we had was just a little bit under same with the noodles and this final boil is what's going to allow both of them to finish cooking at the exact same time As you can see it's pretty clear here but over here some foam is happening so i'm just going to turn it off now and it, everything will be okay. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take out the pork. So as you can see now, that completely changed the outside texture. The cornstarch that's stuck onto the meat is now soaked with this delicious broth. This is really a test of chopstick skills that I don't have.今天这个面煮得很好面一点都不糊很筋道你得我也学的你加了醋好好吃加一个醋啊多一个也会行香啊没有你要先吃清淡的吃到一半加一点醋然后再吃到一半再加一点丝辣茶哦三层层次不断加